Hey everyone, my name is David Awad, one of the wonderful developer evangelists here at R3 working on Corda, and today I'm going to give you a quick tutorial of how to get started on AWS in five minutes. So let's get started. Now, for the sake of time, I've already created the VMs beforehand, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you exactly how I made them so that you can do the same thing. If you take a look over at our EC2 dashboard, we will go on to create some new instances with that launch instance button right here. I'm going to go with just launching a plain instance. The wizard should pop up and we're going to select Ubuntu server 64 bit, of course. When that pops up, I'm going to go for a t2.medium. We do need a little bit more memory than the free tier will let us just to run Corda at a uh, moderate complexity. So I'm going to take a look at the instance details. You won't really need to change any of this, but when we go on not to storage or tags, but to network security group, you'll want to make sure that you have a security group such as this one. I've created one called Corda Demo that allows all TCP, SSH, and UDP traffic. This is obviously not a very safe configuration, but it will work for our purposes. And when we overview the node configuration that we're going to run, you'll see why it's just easier to do this for the purposes of a demo. But of course, if you wanted to, you can uh, change the specifics of how you're running this however you like. So if you go to review and launch, we will see instance is not uh, eligible for the free usage tier, improve your instance's security, it's open to the world, which it is, and uh, all of that looks good, right? The only thing, you just want to make sure that all this traffic is allowed. We want to just be able to connect to our nodes and make sure they can see each other. Of course, this would still work if you were using a VPC or using more restrictive network rules. All of that is totally fine. So we're going to go to launch. It's going to ask me if I want to use an existing key pair or create a new one. You can, of course, do whatever you like. In my case, I'm going to use the Corda Demo Keys key pair that I've created for myself. So that will be what we launch the instances with. And so I'm going to click that launch instances and I will see that the instances are now launching. And in a couple of minutes, you will see the AWS EC2 dashboard with your nodes launched. And then we will get into how you can connect to them. All right, here is my EC2 management console. I've got two VMs here that I added the names to, VM1 and VM2. They are both T2.medium instances in US East. That's just where I happen to be. That won't affect you. Uh, both of them are obviously running, and they have some public IP addresses. There's no monitoring. They're publicly available to anyone on the internet. But like we said before, if you choose to change up your network configurations, you won't have any problems. As long as the two nodes can communicate with each other, you will be all good. Just to give some background on what's happening here, I'm going to jump into the terminal. So all I've done is I have copied the GitHub repo, again, link in the description, onto my local machine. I have two folders, VM1, VM2, and commands.sh. So there's two changes we need to make here. Our quarter network is going to be a four node network with a notary, party A, party B, and party C. Each of these are going to be in different regions of the world. And so I've architected this folder to have the configuration in specific spots so that it's easier to understand what's happening. So I'm going to go into the VM one folder just to take a look at that. Inside of the VM one folder, you'll see that notary and party A are intended to run on the VM1 node. And so we've got a couple of things in here. We're going to use Docker to run Corda on this machine. So we'll take a look at the Docker compose file first. Inside of here, we have what you would probably expect, a couple of services defined, in this case, the notary service. We've specified the image. We have the container name. The ports that we want to be open are open. In this case, it's going to be uh, 10,002 and 10,003 as well as some volumes for some Corda configuration information. Similar thing for the Party A node. Party A is also running Corda, so it's going to look really similar, with some different ports made available because we're going to be actually able to access Party A to use the Corda node shell. So now that we've seen that, the other thing I want to show you is actually inside of the notary folder where we have certificates and node.conf. And so if we look inside of node.conf, you'll see the first change that we have to actually make. We're going to go in here and we will see the legal name is set to notary. This one runs out of London and the peer-to-peer -peer address is going to be set to your VM. 
Again, this is the actual address that is going to be uh, the address of the VM. So that's 3, 234, 212, 252. So if I go into my browser, you'll see that that is what's uh, the specified. Inside here, you see pretty much what we expect. The my legal name is set to notary, it's in London, and the peer to peer address has to be set to the actual public IP address of the machine itself 3234 212 252. If we go back into Brave, we will see on AWS that that is the IP of VM1. And so we do the same thing in uh, party A is node.com. You see there we have that same 3.234.212.252. And that is the big change that we need to make for copying those onto VM1. As you can imagine, in VM2, we have to do a similar thing. So if I look at, let's say, party C's node.conf, we see that party C is based out of Sydney, Australia, and the peer to peer address is going to be different. This one's 3.236.11.247. And then some of these other uh, things are what you would expect the quarter configuration to look like. And all of these, it's worth to, uh, noting, the username is going to be user1 and the password is going to be test. We have that for all the nodes. Don't use that in production, but it's easy for our purposes here. So I'm going to get out of there. And just for the sake of showing it, we've got the same thing going on in node B, where this one's based out of New York. 3, 236, 11, right? We've written in our own IP address. That's this one from AWS and of course, user one and test. Great, so now that we've got all that, we should be all set to go on running these nodes. And so I'm gonna show you how you do that. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to want to copy, now that we've modified these files, you're going to wanna copy them onto the two individual nodes. You can do that in my case, if you want to copy my exact example, you can do that with an SCP cop, uh, using the uh, PEM file that AWS gave you. You can do a recursive copy of this entire folder onto the Ubuntu default user on both IP addresses. Just run this command once to copy it into the demo folder, just a nice easy name on both, uh, both VM1 and VM2. And once you've got them copied over, you're going to want to just run the commands.sh file. So here I've got these two VMs. I'll just show you what that commands.sh file looks like. And all this file does is it does an update, it installs some packages, removes any pre existing Docker information, and then reinstalls Docker the way it expects. It installs Docker Compose and it sets itself up to run successfully. Now, what we're going to do once we've got that installation process done is you are then going to run docker compose dash f to specify the file in this case docker dash compose dash vm1 dot yaml and then we're going to type up so that is docker compose up but passing the dash f flag we're going to do the same thing over here docker compose dash f docker compose uh, dash vm2 dot yaml and then hit up if i could type correctly so i will hit that on both terminals. Now this will take a minute to run. If everything went well, you should be able to see the notary and party A running, party B and party C communicating. You should see the peer to peer messaging loop and SSH server listening on port. You'll generally know if everything went well, but you may need to correct a permission issue or two in order for Docker compose to work correctly. Now, in order to demonstrate that the networking is actually working the way that we expect, I'm going to use the node explorer to do it. So the node explorer actually needs a couple of things. We're going to need the host name, the port to communicate over the RPC username and the RPC password. So to get these, I'm going to actually go into the config file for VM one's party a just to start there. So if we go inside there, we'll see that there is party a it's based in France in Paris specifically. I'm going to grab this peer to peer address. I'm going to also grab the port. This is the port we're going to want to use. And then be aware that the username and password here are going to be user one and test. Again, these are not production safe. Do not use them, but it is good for our demonstration purposes. So there's that uh, node host name. There's the port. 
I'm going to put in that username of user1, and that password is test. And it works. I'm able to view the node information, the network parameters. I'm able to actually visualize the network. I can run transactions, access the vault, and even change settings. So there's us based out of France. And of course, there's the notary based out of London and Party B in New York, etc. And so now we know that the networking between these nodes is happening the way we expect. We've not done anything uh, outside of this tutorial. So if you're able to follow this, you shouldn't have any problems getting yourself set up in AWS. All right. And with that, we want to thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful for you. If you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Give it a thumbs up and hit the notification bell to get notified when we put out new content. In addition to that, please do feel free to reach out to us on our LinkedIn, on Twitter, on our public developer Slack, where you can talk to all kinds of quarter developers from all over the world. And of course, feel free to check out our new developer training. We look forward to hearing from you and helping you out on your quarter journey. So thanks again for watching and we'll talk soon.